There we are, sailing for the first time after splashing at the shipyard. And Video Annie has a big announcement. I'm across the Atlantic Ocean! It's gonna look like this, but no land for 4,000 miles. the boat gods had other plans for us in throwing a pretty big repair our way right after we splashed back. Follow along as Video Annie climbs the mast once, twice, three times. Not so much a lady after that. No good. Not good. As we deal with a pretty disheartening issue with the mast, but it did make for some great how-to tips that I wanted to share with you. So. Travel back in time with us to our first weekend headed out on the hook. Yeah, we were a little overly excited, but when your boat used to look like this and it's finally put back together and you're about to take it out for the weekend and drop the hook, you're allowed to be kind of ridiculously happy. Our first weekend out was also a really good time to test out the new electronics on the boat. <laughs> it all looks like Chinese. We don't yet know how to work our stuff. Right, oh, there's true and apparent. I see that. It's cool. What did Brandon say? I said he said it on some crazy mode, I'm sure. <laughs> so, it's in Chinese. Once we overcame our language barrier, it was cool to see the AIS and the BNG mirrored to our phones. Any girl out there. Any girl. He's mirrored the um, BNG on his phone. It's kind of cool. Watch the phone. Oops, and the phone goes away. All right, go for it. So any girl is oh, yeah. 19 meters long. It's going 4.1 knots. Force <laughs> is 262 degrees magnetic. Uh, go back to our course. that we are going 4.0 yep. and the depth is 23.8 our heading is 81 and that's cool <laughs> Brandon hooked us up thanks babe we were also really excited to see our new hydraulic autopilot holding in far more winds than our auto helm used to with no problem Head to the port they're on the other side of there. You can see a couple sailboat masts. There's about five sailboats over there already. And this is the north cut that we're going through here. You always take over to the port and go drop the hook for the weekend. No more shipyards. We also got to try out our new Mantis Bridal for the first time. Remember in my boat tour video when I said 
definitely are pleased with the Mantis bridle. You just have to learn how to set it up right. <laughs> I'll tell you that, Mantis folks, if you're watching, we need a better video on that, okay? <laughs> well, this is why. Before, I would have had it going through right here. That is what I do best. I was royally screwing that bridle up, but having a great time in the process. Hey, Captain, we got a wake coming. <laughs> and when we finally did drop the hook, we found out just how goobered up we were. <laughs> We eventually got ourselves figured out, and while I know you're dying to see these big boat repairs and problems, don't worry, they're going to greet us the very next day. Just give us this one little peaceful night on the hook. And it was quite fitting our first night on the hook that Brandon with Perdido Sailor Inc. at the Pensacola Shipyard came to raft up with us. Having spent all of those long, hard days and months with Brandon at the shipyard, being with him for our first weekend out was the perfect way to celebrate. Cheers! 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 Cheers. 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 <laughs> Philip and I were definitely celebrating. Philip even got his DIY certificate for graduating from the yard. Yeah. Is that your certificate? That's my certificate. I graduated. Our, our DIY. Well, others are getting ordered, so yours isn't in yet. Yeah, that's why. Or I did I not graduate? Oh, man, it's sauce <laughs> cotton. Yeah, you didn't cut the mustard. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> oh yeah, no, that's a perfect fit. Latest rest right there, right next to five o'clock. We tucked in for a beautiful night at the anchorage, as well as a gorgeous sunrise. And now you get to see where the other half of cruising begins, as all of our problems rain down on us the very next day. It was all supposed to be so simple. Run me up the mast to accomplish one tiny little chore. You ready to climb the mast? Always a chore on anchorage. We're gonna get our stack pack lines put back in and check once again that all our cotter pins are in. <laughs> Just for peace of mind. <laughs> Running the stack pack lines was really no problem at all. I was having a great time up there, hamming it up for the camera, taking selfies. It wasn't until we brought me back down that we found our problem. Watch here as I'm unhooking my bosun's chair and I pull on the main halyard. We found the main halyard was not pulling freely up and down the mast. It was getting caught, tangled, and twisting. So we decided to send me up again, this time to the very top, to check on the pulley. Go pro, you're at the top of the mast with me. blaster too. Feels like it's jammed. We were about as stumped as I imagine you are right now. We had a couple different operating theories. That's what I thought. I that around the 
So, operating theory number one, the halyard got wrapped around the VHF. Recall when we ran our new wires in the mast, we had to put the VHF outside of the protective sleeve because it did not fit. I was going to say, maybe one of those tank pieces when they came back through the bolts are, you know. Operating theory number two, recall when we installed the new wire rigging, we had to insert new through bolts through the mast. Particularly here at the lower shrouds where two through bolts were close together, we thought perhaps the halyard got zigzagged around them. It could be where it's got a... Whatever the cause, it was clear our halyard was not pulling freely and that it was having to curl and twist around some obstacle in order to come out. While I truly do enjoy going up our mast, the views are usually amazing up there, I had no clue how many times I would have to be sent up there to try to solve this problem. Because we thought the halyard was wrapped, our first plan was to send me up to drop a yeah, new one down. come out, but she needs to hold on to it up there. Oh, okay. Okay. I mean, I guess we can refeed it, but I was just saying we, yeah. we drop it down. All right, so we are redropping a halyard today. We've got our weights on our fishing line that um, I'm going to feed. They're going to hoist me up and we'll feed that in to the shiv, followed by the halyard, the bitter end. And we're hoping the boys can take that plate off right there and fish it out and get our main back in action. Yeah, if we pull it out, I can go ahead and messenger it and have it all ready. And while it really is beautiful up there, I had a rather tedious job ahead of me in trying to drop a new halyard using fishing weights and fishing line. kids just got down from the mass from our accomplishing of nothing yeah i stopped filming because i got a little ticked off the weights immediately got caught right when they went over the pulley actually got stuck i had to fight them with a coat hanger and we lost one of them down to the bottom of the mast this irritated me even more because now we had a fishing weight rolling around in the mast step threatening to clog the very hole that put us in the shipyard to begin with Thinking the size and configuration of the fishing weights was the problem, it was time to run Annie up yet again to try to drop a new halyard. All right, moment of truth. Immediately they jam, and again I think it's the size and shape of the fishing weights. Trying to get them back out. Why would they just go over the pulley? Like the pulley's curved, and the weights are elongated, so they can't make quite a curve. You know what I mean? It's not a perfect. At least this time, you get to see my fun fiasco attempts with the coat hanger, and this time we didn't drop any weights down the mast, but we were unsuccessful again in both dropping a new main halyard and figuring out what the heck was going on up there. You having fun yet? You're probably getting used to this drill by now. Imagine how I felt. <laughs> I'm going to call this one fourth time is charm. <laughs> we are trying, I'm tying fish in line to bike chain because we have been trying, trying, trying to drop a new halyard down mast. So this time we were trying a bike chain, which we had heard because of its weight and curvature was good for dropping lines down the mast. And Brandon had also hooked us up with a snake camera. So hopefully we could see what the heck was going on up there. You know the drill. Here we go. All right. Do you want me to just try to drop the chain down? Truth. Hold it up, Truth. 
I'm sure you guessed, works. it did not. No matter what I stuck in there, it kept getting jammed. It's like it would not go over the pulley. <laughs> so we tried the snake camera so we could see if there was some sort of obstacle in the way. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out where I'm seeing. I even tried to film the screen of the snake camera so I could perhaps watch later and make sense of what I was seeing. I wasn't sure, but it looked like there was a plate, an aluminum plate, blocking the path over the pulley. I think it's that plate between the two pulleys in the front. My diagnosis. No good. Not good. I just, it's so hard to tell. It's the only thing I know that's there, that's that physical, you know? Like a wire, I think, would move out of the way. The plate between those two pulleys, that we believe. The plate is sitting in here, and then we think it's hitting. There's that plate right there. It may have been put in, back in wrong. Uh, testament to you. however stuff comes out, make sure it goes back, just like that. While we did have to take off the mast cap to run new wires in the mast, Philip and I DIY'd the reassembly and were reminded of a lesson we should already know. Anytime you take something apart on the boat, label exactly how it goes back together. I don't know how we can take this cap back off without the stays and all of that. Like how do you keep the ring in the air while you take that cap off? I don't know. I'll bet you're already thinking what video Annie is thinking right now. Ah, another failure. They have to take down the mask. I don't even want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I hate it, babe. I'm sorry. It's alright. I know. Kind of crappy, right? <laughs> But I put this video in the how-to series because there were a lot of valuable lessons that Philip and I learned here. First, perspective. Anytime you can, look at a repair as a learning lesson. Each time you crack open your boat, dissect it, and fix something, you learn about your boat and you gain DIY skills that will probably translate to savings in the future. Second, I'll share with you a good tip our buddy Brandon who is an incredibly knowledgeable boat owner, particularly when it comes to maintenance and repair, taught us, and that is the 10% rule. Try to budget and tuck away each year 10% of your boat's value to go to maintenance and repair. You may not spend that much every year, and you may spend more some years, but that number is a very good rule of thumb, and it helped Philip and I to sort of suffer the impact of major repairs like this. Third, while Philip and I were pulling the mast the second time, we spotted an issue with the rigging that we were able to diagnose and fix ourselves. And it inspired me to make another video for you in this series, stay tuned, coming soon, a how to DIY inspect, repair, and even replace your own rigging to make you all as self-sufficient cruisers as we are hoping to be. And I think it might be my fifth and sixth hoist up the mast for this project alone. <laughs> stay tuned. Want more of this really cool content? Great! Go to havewindwilltravel.com where you can follow on the blog or get free e-copies of my sailing books and consider becoming a patron for access to my exclusive Atlantic Crossing footage and help us help one of you get out on the water too. Get inspired and get on board! Woo! Got me wet! It's cold! <laughs> How y'all doing? Oh, thank you, thank you. We definitely uh, put it all out there. <laughs> I have no clue. <laughs> Friends in prison, Genevieve, that's all I know. I don't know. Folks will recognize this. We can't lay low. We gotta behave. Shit's getting crazy on the boat. <laughs> it's gonna be Vimeo. You got to pay extra for this. <laughs>